Hi, good morning. <clears throat> My name is Linda Bushnell, and it's, uh, thank you for inviting me, Claire. It's been really great. I'm, it's nice to see everybody here. Happy birthday, Shankar. So I'm going to talk a little bit. My talk is a little bit more technical um, than what Data uh, just covered. But I'm going to talk about um, al control algorithms for uh, power system stability. This is joint work with Radapu Vendran, uh, Andrew Clark, who's at WPI, uh, Daniel Kirshen, uh, who's at UW. So he's the power systems person. Okay. So the problem we're looking at in general for this work is in uh, is power systems in an urban environment. So you have the whole the whole system here, uh, and the main the main problems we're looking at are increasing demand and also increasing reliance on the renewable sources. So, and then if you look at that from, from that perspective, you end up having some problems that we can look at as control systems engineers. So one thing is we're looking at the, um, with increasing demand, so you're having, in the, on the left you have the power grid is trying to uh, supply power for that demand, it's becoming increasing to the limits of the capacity. In the middle, you look at the renewables are all over the map in terms of the volatility, and you have to try to integrate the, the, the renewables into your uh, system. And then you also have, on the very right, you have economic uh, impacts where trying to make more money by having longer distance for uh, generation of power and transportation of power. So all these are the problems that we're kind of looking at, the societal level uh, CPS system of the power grid. And we want to look at this from the perspective of trying to keep the power system stable. Like the big problem for power systems is for stability. And so all of these things are, you have to take into account, right? So this is kind of what, what's setting the stage. So if we want to look at for stability, we're, we're looking at um, two things. So we're, uh, we're looking at in terms of the voltage, you think of it as a phaser. And this is you know, going back to really to basic uh, phaser notation. With the magnitude is the, of the voltage, you want to look at the stability of the magnitude. So that's one uh, problem that we're looking at for the voltage stability. That would actually be the magnitude of the voltage. And then the other one uh, we look at is stability of the bus angles. So in terms of this, the power system with the buses, and that would be looking at phase angles. So looking at the stability of the phase angles. And underneath that one the, the, of the phase angles, you have looking at um, we want to look at that after there's some random fluctuations, so the like small signal type of fluctuations in terms of the, in terms of the uh, phase angle differences, and then also after there's some big large disturbance, like a transient response for these for these um, phase angles. So these are really the in, in the blue you see the the three problems that we're kind of look at in terms of trying to apply the uh, control theory to uh, to have the whole system be stable. So our research effort is looking at, uh, the, the takeaway is that we're going to, our, our research we come up with computationally scalable control algorithms and we want to make sure that we have some verifiable guarantees for these algorithms. So if you look at a power system with the generators and the G and then the buses uh, with, you see the buses with the loads. So one problem for maintaining voltage stability, so you can see that that was just having the switch here, so you're switching in a capacitor for, uh, on, for this uh, generator to maintain the voltage stability, right? So this goes back to that's one problem. The other one would be choosing generators to exert some control to actually damp the, in this case, the small signals phasing, uh, phase instability that's happening. So you want to look at, you know, which generator should you be controlling to do that? So that's the second problem. And then the third problem is if there's a big, uh, you know, some big disturbance happening, you want to actually start shedding loads. And how do you do that? Which loads do you actually shed? So that's like the transient uh, instability <coughs> problem. So these are the three problems that we're looking at in our, in our work. And our work is, uh, the, the new approach that we're doing is we're treating this uh, using tools from submodularity, so submodular optimization techniques to do that. It's really um, looking at uh, choosing sets Right, discrete sets so that of generators or loads, or uh, uh, in this case, to, to do some action right for your control action. Okay, so in this case, so, so I'll give a little just a little background on some modularity. So this is actually a really neat tool that you, we can use in terms of taking from looking at a continuous optimization problem and putting it into the discrete 
domain because we're looking at sets of things. So um, if we define uh, a function from the power set of V, where V is a finite set, to the real numbers. So that's actually going to be our function, our metric. And the fun part about this research is you have to actually come up with what's the appropriate metric that you're actually trying to control and for, right? So that's our function f. Uh, and then we look at, um, you know, I don't have a, a, a pointer, but that's okay. So this uh, capital uh, S would be a smaller set that's in a set capital T, which is in this finite set V. So that's important because we want to look at the smaller set and a larger set in, in your available set, if we think about that in terms of like generators or buses. And then if we pick a point, small v, that's in the larger set, or the whole, the whole set, but not in, in the set T, so that's this v, and then you have, this is the submodular equation. So it's in, in this case, what you're doing, if you add that extra point v into the smaller set s, it gives you a bigger impact than if you added it to the larger set T. So that's kind of this, in, in this case, it's, this function F would be called submodular. It's like a diminishing returns property. So um, this is where you, you know, you're adding, if, you, if, you, if we added this element to the smaller set, this metric F is actually better than if we left it into, the, if we put in the big set. So this kind of, so the, and why, why are we doing this? So, so one thing is you have to fi figure out what your F is, right, for your performance metric. But the, the key for doing this is because then you have, you can develop algorithms that are, have provable guarantees. So you have optimality gap there, but you actually have a really nice um, solution. It's not the optimal solution, but you have a pr approval. So this is just a little, little background if you, um, for some modular, uh, this, this would be an example, this is like sensor coverage area really quickly. So this would be a set S over here would be the, the sensors N1, 2, 3, and T, which is a larger uh, set of N1, 2, 3 plus 7. So S is a subset of T. And then you pick another point, or in this case a node, another sensor, and this one we're picking N5, the sensor N5. And we're adding it to the set S, or you add it to the set T. And you look at how much, so the metric is how much coverage area is covered by this set of sensors. So, and so the total area covers. So in this case, you increase the coverage more in the set S than if you put it, that into the set T. So it's the, di the difference of the increase of coverage area is greater if we added it to the small set. So that's kind of a, you know, a, an example of what submodularity is. So we want to apply this to the voltage, uh, these three stability problems for power systems. The first one is the voltage stability. So this is the magnitude of your voltage in power systems. So you want to require the two things. You want to have that the terminal voltages remain in some kind of uh, bound, right? And then you also want to say after some disturbance it goes back to that, go back to that bound, nice area that you're, that you're working in. So if we want to look at this, so we can look at the, uh, the, the diagram on the, on the left, voltage collapse at bus one. So we have this red color, so the bus number one uh, collapsed. So uh, then what do you do? So then, then what happens, it propagates through the system, right? So then in the middle, well, what happens then if you fixed bus one by putting a capacitor, maybe it was, you know, it was too inductive, you put a capacitor, then something happens at bus two. Right, so it propagates through your system. So then you have to go and fix bus two. So then you, you know, to, write, to, to fi fix the stability here. So you have this propagating uh, effect. You know, think of this modeling it as a, you know, nodes and a graph type, type of model. So the question is, you know, which buses do you actually want to inject in, right? So this becomes a discrete optimization set. So currently it's this exhaustive search, right? So you have this order of you know, complexity, this two to the n minus some heuristics that, that they can come up with. So our, our approach is that we look at this with a submodular technique, right? So we have uh, select the set S of devices to inject or remove, really you're, you're putting in some impedance, right? To change, change, the, the, um, change the impedance, right? So the first one, voltage collapse at bus one, so you have, it's actually S would be an empty set, and then in the middle, the voltage at two exceeds, so you, you want to inject something at, at the bus one, so S would be this one. And then the third one on, on the very right, you have, you're actually injecting into two places, so your, your set uh, of nodes would be one and two, 
So that's the smaller set. So, and the objective function for this that we picked was a, is actually was a switching cost of actually doing the switching from, and then also some parameter lambda, which is this trade-off parameter, and looking at the voltage deviation from, from the magnitude from where you want to be. So what our main result here is the f of s is, is going to be supermodular, so that just means that minus f was submodular, as a function of this input set or this pinning set that we have called s. So then we can actually develop algorithms with order of nt complexity, where t is some, uh, depends on some initial values of these voltages. So this is actually a numerical study really quickly. So looking at the IEEE 30 bus, we had this trade-off parameter when you're, when the, the parameter, so you're weighing uh, the voltage uh, deviation more as you're going to um, higher to the, to the right, right? So you, instead of the, um, in, that is going back to the, um, the switching cost and the voltage deviation. So you're, if you're weighing the voltage deviation more, you can see that the submodular uh, algorithm keeps the, uh, on the right is the computation time is still low, while the current methods increase a huge computation time because they have to look at all the combinations. So we can do this with a smaller set. So that's, um, <clears throat> that was, so this is one result and we had this in the ICCPS this, uh, this year for that one. And then the second problem, looking at small signal stability. So the, the idea is that you have this generator G1. It's generating energy. And you can see these are the angles of the voltage. OK, thank you. So the angles of the voltage between rotor angle 1 and maybe 2 and 3 for the generator. So they're off a little bit. So they're unsynchronized, not, not synchronized. So um, what you have this separation. So this is a big problem. So this would be this is the small signal instability that can happen. Uh, and then what happens if you have some small s fluctuation in the loads on top of this, then there can be a lot of instability, right, so in terms of this. So how do you approach this problem? Well, we kind of approach it the same way. You have all these generators and you want to see, well, which ones should you do, do something with? And how do you do that? So, so in this case, we add a, l add a little bit of uh, centralized control through this uh, SCADA system. You have all the PMU me measurements, right, coming in. And then you want to send some extra control signal to, some, to these generators, right? So the idea is you have n generators, right? So the, the worst case is order of n to, you want to choose k, right? So say you cho n choose k generators, choose k generators that you're going to send the signal to instead of sending them to all of them. So it becomes a problem with how to actually select this minimum size set, right? So you have this, you can set it up to be in terms of this, um, in terms of a submodular approach, and, and this is kind of just new, new work that we have, which um, it just shows that you, know, you can do the same thing. We're selecting uh, uh, only a few of the generators to actually do this extra control to, so that you can show that the whole system stays stable for this small signal. Okay, so then um, that's the second problem, so that's kind of new work. And then ongoing work, then the third problem, we're just kind of starting to look at this for what happens if you have a large disturbance in your power system, right? So you can kind of see um, if you have some huge, you know, transient uh, thing happening in your power system, you have this response. So the idea is to actually come up and do islanding, and you separate things into islands, and you, then you can control the islands to keep things stable. So the, uh, the question, again, is how to choose the set of these controlled islands, right? So it becomes, you take this continuous problem optimization and put it into discrete uh, set, kind of almost like, you know, for controls, like input, set, uh, input selection set. Okay, so that's kind of what I wanted to talk about, just kind of how we're applying the submodularity uh, framework to these type of problems. It's really interesting with power systems to look at this from a control point of view. Um, and I just have some references, and I just want to throw up some old, old photos. Claire said to find some photos, so I wanted to find from a, a, a graduation, uh, 1994, <laughs> and then a trip to Greece in 1996. I think you'll show some of these later too. But yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, yes. Very nice memories. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.